Hello and welcome to another Mothership Maintenance Blog. In the last Maintenance Blog you might have seen that we pulled into Porto Cristo in Mallorca to have some repairs done, namely the crankshaft seal and the Victus coupling bushings. And also as it had been over 2,000 miles since the timing belt change, we thought we'd also check the pulleys and the water pump as well. And as you see in this episode, it's a good job we did. I'm up for a bit of DIY as you know but because the marinas are so expensive in that part of the world I didn't want to be sat on the dock for weeks on end while I try and figure out how to do the job and to source parts so Torsten the Can engineer from Yacht Concept Mallorca came Hi. on board who agreed to be filmed and talked me through the whole job as well so our engine, the Volvo Penta TMD22, is the same as a Perkins Prima, but this procedure is pretty much the same for all Pentas of this age. As the timing belt was getting changed, we thought we'd also get the pulleys and the water pump checked as well, and it was a good job we did. So timing belts are scheduled for a change on these particular engines every 2,000 hours, and we were past that by this point. And the timing belt is sandwiched between two cover plates at the front of the engine, or in this case with Amels, it's the back of the engine because we go through a C drive. So first of all, we had to uh, take off the alternator belts which meant uh, loosening off the tension on the 12 volt and the 24 volt alternator. Original installation Volvo and this is the short yeah. 24 volt installation. Okay. Then it's just a matter of removing the outer cover and revealing the other pulleys and the timing belt itself. So in order to get the outer casing off we had to take off the water pump pulley first. So the first thing we noticed was grease on the inside of the outer cover. This was located where the idler roller usually is, um, so it meant that uh, that needed uh, further investigation. Two turns of the uh, crankshaft, I was one turn of the camshaft. Then it enters two times in every turn of the camshaft. And there are locking mechanisms for the crankshaft and the camshaft, um, but you have to get them lined up properly to do that. So there's two locations for a locking pin. There's one on the flywheel housing down here and the other one is just on the top here uh, on the camshaft. And in this case we just used a couple of drill bits. When, when it uh, reaches the hole then it goes in. It's in and it's in. So next came the crankshaft pulley. I think there's an extra pulley put on the end of this to accommodate the extra 24 volt belt. So the inner pulley needed a bit more power to get that off and also a pulley extractor. Ah.
<laughs> so before going any further, he took some pictures of the setup of the pulleys. And also marked off the uh, injector pump pulley. And this helps with realignment later. So you're just marking the position of the, yes, the pulley. Yes, mark it, mark it in a way that it stays forever. Then he removed the tensioner pulley. Uh, this tensioner here. Oh, tensioner. It's still good, but it's it's not new. And the idler pulley. And finally we got to the timing belt, which wasn't in too bad a shape actually. So, as we noticed from the outer cover, the idler pulley was leaking grease. Oh, is that the one with the grease? No, it's probably still, still working here. We saw a sort of a spray of grease on the inside of the of the belt plate and that's where it's come from so this is getting replaced as well. And next was the fuel injection pump pulley which needed a bit of encouragement. Some cable on here to not get lost in this connector. And then the camshaft pulley. And underneath it, the hub. This thing here can get loose, so you have to take care, this is important. And finally we got to the inner cover housing. It's going very hard this one. It has to be really clean and dry. Yeah. So later on, if something happens, you can immediately see what comes from. Yeah. Uh, yes, I got some brake cleaner here, that's the best. So behind the pulley and the housing is the fresh water pump or the cooling pump. And this circulates the cooling water around the engine and it was showing signs of wear. There's a bit of play, yeah? not much. So before we could remove that, we had to drain the engine of the cooling fluid and also remove the hoses. Is it working this thing here? I've never used it actually, I've
really good idea to replace it. And the play. So the sound of the play is yeah. not good. It should not sound at all of it. Okay. Good. Okay. And it's, I mean, later on, if the play gets bigger, then, then it starts leaking here. It's not good anymore, this pump. I think this, it's the first pump because they're not painted. Even even if you buy them in Volvo, they're not painted. No, it was completely loose. So we've had a, a busy day. We've taken off all the pulleys and the and the wheels, and we've also taken off the water pump um, and. This was probably the most expensive surprise of the day. It's not too bad, but it's a bit rusted up and there's a bit of a play in it. It's on its way out, so we've decided to go ahead and replace that. So it's Monday morning. Um, we spent um, two days in the marina without any work. So it's 140 euros just for nothing really. So we're a bit anxious that uh, we might have to spend another night here if we don't get all the work complete. I think it's about quarter past nine and the engineer should have been yeah, at eight o'clock and then we thought maybe we got it wrong, maybe it was nine o'clock and now it's quarter past nine, but it's just the way it is at the moment. So as I mentioned in the last maintenance blog, it's always best to source the parts yourself because it's usually cheaper. Um, but on this occasion, obviously we didn't anticipate everything that was going to be found on the engine. Um, and so we had to buy it through the main Volvo dealer and obviously prices are a premium. So with the extra parts and the extra time needed and also the extra time in the marina, um, we racked up quite a bill on this occasion. Maybe you can buy it somewhere else for 40 euros or something. Yeah. And then it was just a matter of putting everything back the way we'd found it, hopefully, with the, the new timing belt, the new idler, the tensioner, and also the new water pump. So the new idler and tensioner pulled up just in time.
and the timing belt I bought previously because I knew that needed changing. There are suppliers for, for many, for Ford and yeah. for many other companies. We'll be going this direction and not in this. Then, just as things were going smoothly, the, the marks didn't co consist. Somehow, despite marking the injection pump pulley, we'd managed to put it on the wrong way around, or we'd turned the shaft. So, even though the marks were lined up, the shaft had turned around. So, that had to come off again, and the timing belt with it. There's, there are two possibilities to, to fit in here or in here. Oh, I see. Okay. So, even when you mark it here on the outside, because this, this was the position we had here on the Con uh, consistent to mark on the cover yeah the shaft could be turned 180 degrees oh, and then see. it's the other way around okay but in this case it wouldn't wouldn't consist the marks it's not really like it should be Put it the other way around. And let's test this it looks better Then, as with every job I've ever known, screws go missing. But I brought two screws, and I now only have one screw. <laughs> and it's nice to know that it happens to the professionals as well as uh, us DIY people as well. Things that don't disappear, they can't disappear. But eventually we got everything sorted out. Tested the engine, just make sure there was nothing catching on the belt. Okay, can, can we test it? Okay. And we tensioned the timing belt properly. Four pistons. Can we start it again just to make sure if it's not touching the cover somewhere? Okay, it's good. And then put the hoses back in place. The inspection hatch the water pump pulley and the new alternator belts.
one after another. <laughs> Some of them. Man. And then we put the engine cradle back together. And we replaced the coolant fluid. And then got out of the marina before it cost us any more than it already had. And uh, we should go trip. I feel really nervous about the engine. It's been taken apart and put back together. So it's just good to listen to it and um, make sure it sounds okay. We're only going to go and anchor outside in the bay because um, it's a bit late to go anywhere. And we've left the kids as well, accidentally. <laughs> So thanks for watching, thanks in particular to our patrons who keep us going. If you found it useful, give the video a thumbs up. If you want to buy me a coffee or beer, I'll be most grateful. You can do that by following the Mothership links to the PayPal page or the Patreon page in the description below.